Welcome to this special series and I'm so excited to be bringing you the awareness and the tools and the knowledge to ensure that you can thrive after narcissistic abuse. And with the release of the book that's, that's now happening and all the special things that are happening over the coming weeks, we're going to be bringing awareness of narcissistic abuse and most importantly, the tools to heal for real into mainstream which is where it is so, so needed. And to help us make an extraordinary impact with this, I'd really love you to get involved by sharing this information and also leaving your comments and questions so that we can have really rich discussions about it. That's gonna be awesome. So my book, my new book, which is You Can Thrive After Narcissistic Abuse is going to be available mid-November. So to find out all the details and pre-order, you can go to youcanthrivebook.com. So today I'm really excited because I have one of my most favorite soul sisters with me and we're going to be talking about why narcissists target light workers. And I know that there are many people in the world that want to share their gifts and their light and make a difference, yet they've been dragged into the darkness. They've been dragged into the pain with narcissists. And I've certainly experienced this and my beautiful friend, Teresa, has also experienced this. And I know that many of you have as well. So today to discuss this really fascinating topic, I have the amazing Teresa Chiang. And to introduce Teresa uh, to everybody who doesn't already know her, she is a Sunday Times best-selling author in the field of spirituality, heaven, the science of the paranormal, and the afterlife. Born into a family of spiritualists, she has over two decades' experience, both personal and professional, boasting a master's degree in theology and English from King's College, Cambridge. And she's had her work featured in the Daily Mail most recently with her latest best-selling book, Answers from Heaven. And in 2014, she was their resident dreams expert. Teresa is such an extraordinary lady in my life and in the MTE community because Teresa got in contact with me and said to me, Mel, you need to have a book. And it was because of Teresa's input and her encouragement and her help that this book, You Can Thrive After Narcissistic Abuse, was given um, birth to. Because after Teresa had accessed the NARP program, she passionately declared that this work needed to get out to greater audiences. And Teresa, I am so grateful for you myself, this entire community, you know, you are an angel that was the wind underneath our wings to get this out there and get this happening. And you were able to introduce me to uh, the Watkins team and just an incredible uh, group of promoters and people that are getting behind this mission and this book in so many ways. So thank you from the heart, dear lady, and thank you for doing this interview with me. Oh, Mel, I've just been sitting there listening to you and I'm, I'm just so grateful to be here. I cannot believe it, actually, because like a lot of people who watch your videos, I watched you for a long time and the words gave me such comfort because I'd been a victim of narcissistic abuse at, at a late stage in my life because I'm, I've kind of always got this um, idea of seeing the best in people and the good and then it hit me. And I, Mel taught me that it hit me for a reason because I'm in a position to have lots of people write to me because I'm a best-selling author about their spiritual struggles or whatever. And so I freely give that advice back. But I reached a point in my life and I was stuck. I was empty. I was drained by this individual who got in touch with me and I was absolutely desperate. And without Mel's videos, I'm not sure I would have been able to continue writing books so I am so grateful and I worked through her amazing resources. And as I was doing it, I thought I want every person on the planet to know their own power in the way that Mel expresses it. It's something I try to express in my books too, but I do it in a very different way because my background's in theology 
religion, psychic development. <clears throat> but Mel has this way of going right to the core, the heart, and showing you that a return to self and a return to self-love is the only way forward. And now when people write to me and I'm at a bit of a loss because I can see they're desperate because something deeply traumatic relationship-wise has happened, I, I refer them to Mel and I could not be more honored to have been, been a part of this. And I, I just want everybody to have a copy of it at some point in their lives because it is truly life-changing. Mm. And it's so because of you that this happens. So as I said, we're so grateful. But let's get on to today's topic because it's so interesting. Yeah. And I know that we both believe that you know, light workers are people who at a soul level have chosen to help raise consciousness on this planet. And we're usually people that are interested in spirituality or in service industries or you know, we're sensitive, soulful people that like helping people and making a difference and we're givers. But we both know that this is not always an easy path being a light worker. And you would have seen it a lot in your communities as I've seen it in this community. Light workers can be targets for narcissists. So, you know, why is this? Because as you say, we're givers and we want to help other people. But in that is that reason is why the narcissist targets us because they see that that is our vulnerability in a way and it's something i didn't look at in myself because why did i feel that i always had to put everybody ahead of myself always be um the helper the giver and it's partly because of my spiritual upbringing you know i mm -hmm. i dabbled with wanting to become a nun um even took time considering my options where it is about being selfless and giving to others and you do not matter so it was all that conditioning that i had to to reevaluate because if i can't give to myself how can i properly give to others and empower them so in a way now i i see the experience with the narcissist that came into my life almost as a gift from heaven it sounds absolutely ridiculous to say that for people who are going through that deep pain of withdrawal from the narcissist who has touched their lives but it is was truly a gift because it made me look at everything about myself and why I was doing it and also that there was a serious lack of self-love and I was trying to make up for that deficit by helping other people and it's an ongoing journey now I'm a work in progress like all of us are in Mel's community but now I understand and I have the tools that when that deep pain comes again, when you have been let down, someone has gaslighted you or someone has taken you <clears throat> completely for granted or, or whatever, and you just feel this is wrong, 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 but you can't say it because you are conditioned to be nice and the giver. Now I have the tools and I know how to walk away, but it is tough and I'm so grateful for, for Mel and her team and their ongoing going support to, to deal with it. And it makes me a better author, a better writer, and paradoxically a better giver. Oh, it's so true. I think we were all so conditioned to think that people are gonna treat us the way that we treat them. But when we exactly. understand the deeper quantum truths, it's like, well, actually people are gonna treat me the way that I treat and I feel about myself. You know, we're all unconsciously training people what our boundaries and what our limits are and what our yeses and what our noes are. And even good people aren't mind readers unless we're able to get past, you know, those fears of crap, the criticism, rejection, abandonment and punishment and just be really honest about what we need and how we feel and what does and doesn't work for us. It was huge for me too. I think it's huge for so many people in this community that we just haven't had those boundaries, um, you know, working really, really well. I think, I think the light worker journey, Teresa, is such an interesting one because a lot of us are really drawn to the spiritual stuff and even before narcissistic abuse, um, I don't know about you, but I found that life wasn't even, you know, easy even before narcissistic abuse. What do you think are some of the common things that light workers um, have struggled with? 
Well, for me, my struggle was I can't be happy unless everybody else is happy. That was a, definitely a mantra for me um, right from childhood. And, and as I said, your, your program has helped me see that it, it's deep rooted in, in how, I, how I was brought up. It, it's always feeling you've got to go that extra mile. You've got to not put your own needs first. And a narcissist, that is just like nectar to them because they find someone, however awful they are to them, this person is going to think, I see the good in you. I see the good in you. I can find it. And it's like almost like the hero. I'm going to be the hero. I'm going the one who's going to show you about uh, the power of unconditional love. Yes. That's what we're taught through religion and Christianity time and time again. And as mm -hmm. I said, I, you know, when I was at Cambridge, I read theology. So I was in that environment. You know, I, was, I wanted to be the first female vicar, I remember, and um, mm -hmm. that lived it. Um, but it's been a slow unraveling uh, over time and, and realizing that loving yourself and actually doing kind things for yourself and putting your needs first actually sends a more powerful message to others because it shows mm. them how to love themselves. And what I was actually doing, I think, in my work was showing people how, how to be givers. And yes, we all need more kindness in the world and giving, but I wasn't showing them how to be truly free and empowered. And that is the, the missing link that you were able to to give to me and the amazing thing is actually as as i was working through your your program i was working on several projects several of them were collaborations but there was one i did just in my own name and i put the minimum amount of effort in that absolute wow. minimum and the maximum in the others i was working closely with them um, and, and and continue to do so and i poured a lot of myself into that gave mm. a lot and they the universe yielded very little <laughs> in return and feedback however the one that i'd spent a couple of weeks on just in my own name didn't think would do any what that well at all is now translated in 14 languages wow it's got me into china russia all over the world Gosh. and the outpouring of mail and it's again it's like the universe saying look you're okay you're enough just believe that you're enough so um I, i'm going on a tangent here because there's so much to say but it, it's, it's just beautiful like, that powerful message of mm. pay attention to your own needs. There's a reason why in a plane they say put your own oxygen mask first. And I had been walking around as a spiritual teacher, healer, without oxygen. And I think there are a lot of empaths out there like that. And I meet them all the time. And I just want things though, again, I can't, unless they ask for help now, I've learned, don't try and help people unless they ask for it. But it's almost like Perfect. I just want to say, your own needs first, please. You can't help mm. someone unless you've lived through it. You need to heal yes. your own wounds first. And I'm on that Love journey it. now, and I'm gonna be writing so many more powerful books now. I've done pretty well, sort of half full, my tank half full of self-love. And now when it's full, I'm looking forward to the future so much. Gosh, <laughs> imagine what you are going to write with your tank full. Oh, it's yeah, gonna it's, be amazing. It's so I love that. And I love the aeroplane analogy because to me, if we're gasping for air, what good are you going to be to somebody? In fact, you could actually do more damage to them than good. Yeah. And often we're doing that. We don't even realize that we're doing that. Oh, gosh. Well, I find that now because maybe in the past, you know, when people do jump in to help, actually, I've aware of myself, actually, but I know it sounds awful, beware of givers. Because sometimes, because that's how the narcissist often comes into your life, is giving oh. you all this. And the person that came into mind just took my dream, which was to, to, obviously I'm a writer, I've had two Sunday Times top 10, you know, I've done very well, but to take it to the next level and go global and all that. Yes. And I was sold a complete fantasy and I was hooked into it and they were like making me seem like I was the chosen one. And I was so gullible. I'm ashamed and embarrassed really looking back at how I fell for it and and but that's what happened. But I needed it. I absolutely oh. needed it. And to say I'm grateful to them. And I'm now, yes. thank goodness, I am in a position to send them love. Yes. Um, just about. <laughs> yes. That takes work. It takes work, but it so was a liberating gift. when we get there. Yeah, and it was all all and, and then someone who comes into your life like that and spins all this and then mm completely 360 and it's like what, what what happened they've gone they've gaslighted or they're abusing and, and it's like I don't understand this at all I see I had not encountered people like that I must have had a charmed life the angels I write books about angels must have been warding off these demons 
in some way. I don't know, but it suddenly hit me it was at a mature for age. One. Yeah. And, time and, for one and, uh, to take you to that, that next level of evolution. And they do that. It's a fast track. It's make or break this experience. It is. In, in some way, if you haven't experienced it, it's almost like you're not evolving. Because one of the messages in my books is that we're here on this mm -hmm. earth to evolve and grow. Because people say, totally. what's the meaning of life? I get letters like that. And it's, I've now realized it's to be curious and it's to learn to grow. Maybe not necessarily to be happy all the time. Because a lot of people think heaven totally. is eternal happiness. Exactly. I think in heaven, we're just as much growing because people who've had near-death experiences, they talk to me about, they go on the other side and they're still learning and growing. You know, it's, it's wow. eternal, our growth. Um, I believe that too. In my life between lives regression, I actually saw that exactly, that souls are still going through an evolving process. It, it's eternal and that's our it meaning. It is our meaning through, in, through the pain and in some ways, and that, that's a very poetic way to look at it. But you are a spiritual yeah. person, not if you're perfect, because I'm certainly not perfect. Yes, correct. And people call Stay me spiritual lady. And not if you're yeah. unconditionally loved, you're a spiritual person if you are learning and most important for learning from your mistakes. Oh and gosh, I think that's the totally. You couldn't Sorry. have put that better. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's about getting real. And I think that's so much about the light worker path is that we're not here to stand up and be gurus and say, you know, I know better than you or all of that stuff. We're here to get real and we're here to take out the delusions and the illusions that life's happening to us and say, well, it's happening for me because it's actually reflecting back where I have got this right and it's reflecting back what I still need to heal. And that's what narcissists really do with light workers because I love what you were saying before about when this person came into your life that you they were saying i can give you this i can give you that i can make you this and i can make you that and that's what narcissists do whether it's saying i can get you to new york time bestseller or whether i can you know give you the most amazing love experience you've ever had or i can validate you in a way you'd never be validated or whatever it is or i can provide you with you know fabulous overseas holidays or these are all the things that we have in oh, i was offered gifts i was offered gifts you know um and i remember wow um how much do I owe you for that? Because I, I don't like to take zero, zero, all that. Ah, uh, okay, I, yeah. And then the love bombing started, and 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 everything. I mean, yeah. uh, what you write in your books, I have lived it, lived it, Mel, and um, mm. I wasn't. The narcissist for it. thing, because they come along and they go, well, these things that you know you, you you're not whole within yourself. I'm going to make you. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to be your source of these things and. That's our hugest lesson. And it becomes like a drug, doesn't it? That you get mm. kind of that high because it is a most tremendous high. Absolutely. And, and it's learning that I've got to be that high to myself and not seek it outside. Absolutely. So whenever I'm feeling low, it's because I'm seeking it again, like how many sales of my books or when's my next podcast or how's that Facebook post doing? You know, that, that should not give me a high, but it, it's so hard to to turn it in inwards and and realize no it doesn't matter at the end of the day i must be happy with myself and my life regardless of how well i'm doing who who's in my life that's right that's right and you can't fix anybody you can only give them the power and the insight to work on themselves i know that if they that's choose my... to do it and i think the thing is you know as light workers when you know going back to that whole thing about when narcissists come in to be a source to us we haven't realized that because we haven't anchored our light and our self-love yet we've had like this either low or high or medium level anxiety and depression this emptiness i know i always had that so when people you know the narcissistic types would come into my life and my big narcissistic relationships that high that you're talking about was the relief of almost like, you know, if we had stones in our shoes and then we got the stones out, the relief that the pain is gone is such a high and the relief of the depression and the anxiety and the emptiness going because, oh, you're feeling those parts of me that I haven't yet healed and filled from myself. That's why I'm on yeah. such a high with you, you know, and we didn't realize this until the deeper journey took 
place about what's actually going on. And I think light workers, we've been very, we, we're here to find our light, to anchor it, to then help other people evolve. But we didn't come in with an easy journey. And often in our soul contracts, we're meeting these dark characters that we think are fulfilling and giving us our light so that, and we think we're giving it to them, but actually what they're doing is they're showing us those places within us where we need to lean into to heal, to claim our authentic light. You know, it pushes us inwards, and I know it did that for you. So, you know, with your inward stuff, what was your experience with coming in? Well, I had to because I, and, and as I said, thank so much I found your videos because I, like most people, it happens the first time. You, you, you think it's you and then yeah. you start Googling and, and I, I came across your videos very soon and completely it was, it was such a revelation to know that I was not alone because you actually think you are deeply flawed and you're isolated because narcissists do have a way of isolating you from people who really care about you. And it's, it's it, there are people, every, we all have people in our life, well, I hope we do anyway, even mm. if it's your pet or whatever, yeah. um, who deep care, care for you regardless of who you are or how successful you are. And they have a way of kind of isolating you for that. And that's what slowly happened to me. I mean, I was traveling abroad, abroad for long periods of time to see them. But I, I look back and I think, what was going on there? I was giving so much. Um, and, and then almost overnight, there was a, like a switch went off. All the the um, the the love and the, the the dreams gone, and typically it was by introducing someone new into it to to triangulate or whatever, and and it was it was I was on my knees with absolute confusion, and I I, I almost I was at the point when I, I thought why am I here on this planet I don't understand anymore I I've never been, I have been low in my life before, you know, I, I write about that in my books, but this was such a low, it was absolute desperation. So it was basically grow or die, really. Oh, that gosh. was the choice. Mm. Um, and um, I realized yeah. then that you don't go to heaven, you grow to heaven. And, oh, I love that. And, and, and it's just that, that journey and learning how to do it. Mm. And really, I look back in my early books, actually, I've written 20 years and I actually realized I was writing all this. I did instinctively know it, but I hadn't lived it. I was giving this advice, but it was like, if you try and teach someone about love and somebody hasn't fallen in love with themselves, I mean, a healthy love, until they experience it, you can describe love like through poems or poetry or novels. And it's like, you're looking at it until you live it, you don't know. And I realized that with my books, I was writing the correct information as it were, the right self-help spiritual advice, but I hadn't, lived that pain I hadn't lived that devastation um mm. and, and and as I said it was basically a point when I, I just had to for the sake of my children and my family and my readers in a way because I felt such a fraud I was getting all these emails of people saying Teresa thank you for your book it helped me through a struggle I'm feeling really dark I mean and I had to now then give advice and I thought I can't I, I'm empty and um, mm. it was then learning that I had to go on a journey and I did the meditations and I, I, I did the time and I'm going back to the past to try and locate why I had this terrible hole. They, see, this is what I love about you know this work is that when we lose trauma and we bring in true self, we get the best of everything. We, we yes. really move into the best of everything. And I think, you know, as light workers, because... I think this planet has been so poised on let's just, you know, let's try and deal and let's try and manage and let's try and, you know, shove our trauma down and find ways to deal and manage and work around it. Why don't we just get rid of it? And as light workers, for me, trauma is the darkness. And when we release and we get rid of that darkness, which is our fear, which is our confusion, which is our less than beliefs, which is our limiting beliefs about ourself, a higher power, others, this planet, life, all the things we faced, all of our epigenetic traumas, all of the humanity traumas, all of our childhood and adult traumas. And when we release that darkness, 
then we can be a light worker embodying light who's no longer bonding and handing power away because of our woundedness. And I think that is the answer, I believe, for how we can be light workers, not being targeted by narcissists anymore. And how are we going to lead? You know, we, we have to, as light workers, we're not here to drown in people's darkness. We're not here to get enmeshed in it and taken out by it, which a lot of people have been. I mean, they're so dangerous narcissists because they, people have mm. been taken out by it. And I think totally more light workers that go, go through it, and I think a lot of light workers will, so I'm sad to say, as narcissism on the increase, the more yeah. they survive and actually shine brighter as a result. Oh. That, I hate that word revenge, but that is the, the best kind of, of way to, to deal with it. Um, um, to actually genuinely shine brighter, not because you want to prove mm. to them or you want to... No. It, but because you genuinely feel this incredible healing power within you and you just want to show others, look, I've been to hell and back. There mm. is a way forward. And actually, whatever your age, because a lot of people think the older they get, that you know, that's it. That's their last chance at love or career oh, or whatever. So it annoying. isn't whatever your age. Mm. And the more of us shine bright, that's how we we take out the darkness. That's how we deal with oh, these demons. Gosh, it is. I'm talking very theological true. here, but I do think, you know, mm. I used to study, of course, all the yeah. I think they're demons um, in some form, mm. and it's so. Mm. And I used to feel very sad for them, but now I don't because they are making that that choice. Um, they've sold their soul, um, and that's right. They drain drain the light of, of people around you, um, and and just hunting always for new supply. I, I see them now a mile off, and that's good. I'm getting, I am getting more and better. Sometimes I'm still. There's some very clever ones, but I am starting to get better at, at spotting the signs. Yeah. And usually your intuition's great there. Because I remember with the narcissist that targeted me, because they obviously got in touch with me online, as they, these people tend to do, because it tends to be a way for them to, to, to select their victims. But um, my first instinctive reaction when I saw photographs was, ew, I don't know what, it was just an wow. But somehow they so have true. this ability that you override. This person isn't actually someone that you're, you immediately resonate with. But because of the all the tools that they use, they somehow have, that's an interesting thing, isn't it? But the first, very first reaction doesn't tend to be like absolutely. Maybe it's a day later when they've done all their love bombing or whatever. Yes. But, and me, I do remember that my immediate reaction, and I remember this powerfully, was it weird, mm. wrong, but totally, yeah. totally, exactly. So that inner voice, that inner power, that inner light was yes. there for me and I wasn't listening to it. And I'm, I've, I've, written a bit, I've written a book actually about intuition, which is coming out next year. And uh, That'll be awesome. So powerful to, to, you know, how can we know when it's our intuition speaking or wishful thinking? So, so what advice, Teresa, we're going to finish off on this question. What advice would you give to people who want to start um, a business or a passion related to helping people without being trapped by a narcissist? What, what advice would you give people? Well, first of all, read this book. <laughs> the obvious answer. <laughs> it's wonderful, isn't it? Beautifully done. Um, advice is... And that's this trust book, everybody. Yes, I've got some mine. <laughs> um, the advice I would give is follow your intuition, mm. but don't beat yourself up if you do get taken in by it because mm. it will ultimately help you learn and grow. If you have the tools yeah. that you give them, being aware, actually educate yourself about narcissists because I wasn't aware mm. and that's why it brought me so low. Had I read this book, I would have been immediately been fascinated about it because I'm a voracious reader of all these things. Had I read this book, I probably would have, I probably would have probably still been a victim, but it would not have been quite so devastating and impacted the people close to me in the way that it did. 
And when I was solo, I would immediately have gone to a community, because that's one of the wonderful things about what you do, is the community as well of helpers that you've got. Mm. And, and a place to go online where I could have found people who are going through the same. Because as I said, narcissists tend to isolate you. Absolutely. And, and, and that's, their, that's how they get their power and make you completely in their thrall and that their word is all that matters. And, um, had I, and there were people I wanted to talk to, but I was embarrassed um, because I felt like, you know, I was this spiritual author. I couldn't talk to them. Oh gosh, yes. I, I couldn't talk to my nearest and dearest because I felt like I, I had betrayed them in some ways because all my heart had been going over to people who, who were not good for me. I couldn't, I didn't know who to talk to. So it just seemed so ridiculous and embarrassing. And the shame is awful, isn't it? And then to go on the forum and read stories of people my age as well, because you'd think at my age I'd, have know, I'd know better, especially as I'm a so-called spiritual self-help personal transformation expert. That's how they, they sell me. To say, I'm lost. And, but to know that there are, there are doctors, lawyers, awesome mm -hmm. people, you know, housewives, mothers, um, husbands, life. all sorts of people from all walks of life. Yes. And very and smart I, people, so many people that get taken in are really I, intelligent I'm smart people. from King's College, Cambridge. Yes, exactly, you just, my point. You just, you just, excuse me, <laughs> um, but, you know, you just thought I'd know better. How mm -hmm. could I be so stupid? And I was, and I know why I was because narcissists are so clever. They know that the one thing that is mm -hmm. gold and that everybody wants, it's not money. It's not fame, it's adoration, it's love. It's someone telling you mm. that you are so special. That is what everybody wants. And that's Spot what I'm afraid of. And, and realizing though that I should be telling myself that. Perfect. Not anybody else in my life, not anybody. And mm. um, you know, I, I talked about affirmations and being positive, but they, they never kind of really really work you need to go deep as as your oh, your, yeah. your program is you need to go deep and you need to go right back and you need to find out what what's happened why there's this hole and and it's so it's something you need to do to go deep so if you if you are aware so that at least when it strikes and the, and the first time and somebody starts behaving erratically or or makes you feel terrible that you have somewhere to go and that mm -hmm. that's the most thing know that where you've got somewhere to go because as a light worker if you are truly a true light worker, and as a majority of them are, there of course there's some frauds, majority of them are, you will mm. want to help people. You will want, Absolutely. nothing gives me more joy than to see that my, if, if a reader mm. writes to me and say, I feel so much better having read your book because it, or, or, or somebody in my life that I've touched. And it, it, it gives us great joy. We are naturally, it's our vocation. Absolutely. Um, if you're inclined to do that and you haven't got the tools and techniques to cope when these people come into your life, you are in trouble, deep trouble. Oh, yeah. I have known, I have known someone now who has taken themselves out for it, ended mm. up in a river, and I, mm. I heartbreaking. Oh yeah, and there are famous light workers that have been taken down by narcissists. Absolutely. I mean, the, the brighter your light, the more you're going to attract them as well. So just be careful. Mm. But you know. I li I'm, I'm looking forward to the time when I, I, I absolutely am not susceptible to it anymore. And, but as I say, I'm yeah. a work in progress. Yeah. Because um, I do have this tendency to believe people. Um, and I can't mm -hmm. change who I am. It's my default mm -hmm. setting that I trust. And I always try to see the good. And I do until proven otherwise. But as soon as I'm proven otherwise, there won't be a second chance. There won't be a third chance that you used to give. You know, That's the right. Christian idea turn the other cheek forgive 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 because we are taught that that's spiritual to forgive yeah exactly and they know that they know that that's right they they, um yeah they yeah Sound and you can forgive from a distance without signing up for more of it <laughs> no <laughs> yeah yeah and to know to absolutely to and to know when enough is enough and if there's yeah. no change well then there's no growth and you're really no. just doing Groundhog Day with the same trauma. It's time exactly. to uh, time to get out. Well, yeah. Teresa, this has been an, an amazing chat, and you know I hope that 
I think what, well, I know that the Thriver method to heal and what we do is so much about that light workers no longer have to be the self-sacrificial model where, you know, where we don't have deservedness, where our homes are breaking down, our cars are breaking down, our bodies are breaking down, people just take and abuse us and we just turn the other cheek and we just keep giving and giving and giving. You know, that's the old paradigm of self-sacrificial martyrdom. But the Thriver model is about being our authentic light and showing up, showing people how to be empowered, how to have good boundary function, how to show up and ask the difficult questions, how to command respect and truth and authenticity in our important relationships. And that's what I stand for because I was none of those things. And like you, Teresa, I'm still a work in progress as well. Absolutely. But, you know, I stand united that we're all in this together and that we can shine a light powerfully whilst loving ourselves, whilst having great, healthy, safe, productive, uh, fulfilling lives. We don't have to uh, drown with people anymore or get, get our light taken out. So that's exciting okay. about the You Can Thrive stuff. So for everybody yeah. who's been watching this, I can't thank you enough and I am so grateful and I know Teresa is too for you showing up to watch this interview that we've had um, so much you know, well, love can I just say one thing, Mel? Just sure. one thing, Mel, sorry. No, of course <laughs> you can. The comments, I love that. I mean, you when I was in the early days, the comments, your videos as well were just so powerful. But then, as people do, they scroll down and you get in and the, you don't realise that what your, your listeners give in the comments when oh, they tell their story. Beautiful. It's all helps because so many mm. people feel alone in it. And, and then you read a story, I can tell you the gift they give through sharing oh. like that to your the comments to your videos yeah our, our community is increasing. astounding is astounding and you they know, don't know. We, oh look you know i feel so blessed i have a look at other narcissistic abuse communities and their conversations and the ones that we have it just i'm so grateful to all of you and i hope that we can have a really insightful and inspiring conversation about this topic because i know it relates to so many uh, of you so if you enjoyed this video this uh this interview i'd love you to include your thoughts and your comments or your questions um and also too, you know share this around and please everybody know that you can thrive after narcissistic abuse is available for pre-order now so you can go to you can thrive uh, you can thrive book.com for all of the details and again i'm just so grateful um, for all of you showing up and watching this interview and for all of the uh, interaction and all the information and love and care that you all share in this community. It's just beautiful beyond measure. And thank you, Teresa, my dear friend. And we're all so grateful to you for being the catalyst that uh, got this book to happen. So, so much love. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a fallen angel, but I'm rising again. <laughs> You're just an angel as far as I'm concerned. So um, lots of love, everybody, and bye-bye.